Do you want favourite footballer now? I think mm. I'm going to go with De Bruyne, you know? Kevin De Bruyne. Baller. Yeah, yeah, yeah. watching him is unreal. And I like Mbappe as well. I said before, Sterling's rapid. When I played against Sterling, he, he can run. But he is Mbappe's another level, yeah. Really? I was in a box with Lewandowski, yeah, first session, yeah. <laughs> but that was, was like, I can't surreal, give it wasn't it? Away. Yeah, it's probably my best session of all year. <laughs> <laughs> when the Argentine and Poland fixtures come out, um, I said to Martinez straight away, get me that shirt. So I followed him and he had a bag and it had Messi's shirt in it, yeah. I who's think up, everyone in the Villa who's squad yeah, who's up would say I'm the best golfer at the club. Who's your Not being on? big Eddie, but I am. <laughs> <laughs> What's your go-to karaoke song? Um, Robbie Williams. Oh, which one? What's Angels. One? Yeah. How does that go? <laughs> I said away. Yeah. This is Sport Bible Stories. I'm Mazmer is there. I'm Rory Jennings. And we are joined by Aston Villa and Poland International, Matty Cash. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for coming on, Matt. Yeah. Honestly, really honoured to have you here. We really do appreciate it. Um, there's only one place to start. Aston Villa are flying. Tell me, what on earth is going on? Yeah, to be fair, the last the last few weeks have been really good. Um, to be fair, though, obviously, we brought in a new manager who's, who's fantastic. Um, really good style of play and it's paying off, yeah? We're, we're on fire at the minute, to be honest, so hopefully long may it continue. Why do you think it is, like, the season's going the way it's going at the moment? Is it just the buzz around the, the, the club? What's it down yeah, to? Yeah, I think there's, there's many things, really. Um, as I said then, bringing in a, a fantastic coach with, mm. with great coaching staff around him is a, is a massive major part of it. Um, and yeah, there's been a few challenges, obviously away from home, we didn't pick up great results and uh, we, we, we never sort of re really went on a away run. Um, and, and making Villa Park a fortress as well. I think when you've got a, when you've got a place at home like that, um, with the atmosphere every week, the, the 45, 43,000, whatever it is every week that they bring the voices, having that to play is a major part of it as well. So. Um, yeah, a few different things, really. He's an elite manager, isn't he? Like, when yeah. you think about Unai Emery's record, I think if you were to think about, like, the top managers in the league, I'd say that he is he is in the very top two couple of categories. You know, he is, he is up there comparable to the very best. Have you noticed the difference? Has he been pivotal to sort of elevating the, the club and the club's ambitions? Yeah, he's elite. He's, he's one of the best you'll get, I think. Um, obviously, as a player, when you, when you hear a manager coming in and, and you, the first thing you look at is his style of play, and, um, and and obviously he's had massive clubs before, being at Arsenal, PSG, Villarreal, he's done an amazing job. Um, and yeah, obviously you can hear about it, but then there's another thing when you're working with him. And um, yeah, his style of play, the way he is, the coaches he's got around him, the team he's got is is, is massive as well. Um, and yeah, every day we're learning really. It's, mm. There's no sort of, there's no hiding places. Every day you go to work, it's to work. It's not to just sort of let it go by. Um, and I think that's another part of the reason why we've won six in the last eight. Um, and yeah, things are looking really good at Villa. I think it's about time as well. We've obviously been frustrated the last however many seasons, um, spent a lot of money, bought some fantastic players in, and it sort of hasn't really worked out really, but now it's sort of coming together. Um, and hopefully we can keep the keep the run going, keep the ball, keep the ball moving and doing well, yeah. And what's the ambition now? What are you hoping for by the end of this season? Well, it's like, obviously it's a cliche to say, take every game as it comes. Um, I think that's when you're at a big club and players, sort of people ask sort of the players, what, what sort of the ambition of the club? I think everyone knows the ambition. The size of the club outside the top six, I think Villa's up there with, with the biggest. Um, and yeah, obviously, as I said, we spent a lot of money and, and, and we need to sort of try and climb the table. So I think we're, we're off, obviously, three points off six now. Um, as I said, on a really good run. So I think, yeah, the ambition is to try and get in the top six. I think that's the that's the main aim. Um, I've said in many interviews before that the building block, obviously we stayed up three, four years ago. I think it was four four seasons ago. We stayed up in the Premier League by obviously on the last day. Yeah, agreed. Um, yeah. And like the build, obviously you need to build a sort of, you need to build a, like a, like a bridge really just try and get yourself to the next platform and I think we're at that now yeah mm. and what about for you personally what's your, what's your goals for the season yeah I've, I've always got goals really um, I think obviously coming off the back of a, a World Cup I want to just keep improving keep playing um, obviously Young is doing fantastic at the minute he's in the team and as I said yeah try and get back in the team is obviously one of the, the main ones at the minute for me Um but yeah, I think I've, I've had a good season. I think at the World Cup, I played well. I just want to keep my form, really. Um, 
and yeah, try and try and achieve that. And, and you mentioned uh, battling with Youngie. Do, do you enjoy that little battle? You know, trying to get one number one spot. Yeah, I think Youngie's like <sighs> Youngie's the best they'll come. Really, I think he's like so experienced in the game. He's 38, but I tell him every day he trains like a 20 year old. <laughs> um, yeah, no, nah, yeah, I think it's, it's, it's important that you have competition in your place. You need to sort of fight for your place. It can't come easy, mm. especially at a big club as well. You need you need two players in every position that can start. And I think at Villa, we've got that. Um, so yeah, it's nice to have competition and it's good to see Youngie doing well. I, I, I want that. I want the team to win. I want, I want us to climb the table. And then when I get my chance, I need to prove that I can do it. Do you think it's very important to have players like young around the squad you know just yeah. players that are experienced they know what it takes to win they have true pedigree proven pedigree do you think yeah. players like that really help and help help the overall ambitions of the club yeah for sure i think like you look at youngie's cv he's played at man united for however many years he's played so many premier league games the experience he brings in the group and, and you see it on a day-to-day -day basis in training he wants to win every time um, and that's sort of what I want to be like, and that's what I am like, really. I need to like look at players like that, see the, the career he's had, and, and learn off them, because that's how you learn. You learn obviously, obviously off top managers, but you learn off top teammates as well. So um, yeah, having him around in my spot, we talk about football loads. We've got a really good relationship, and to be to be having him in my position with me, fighting for me, is fantastic. Super. Amazing. Should we, um, if it's okay with you, we'd like to do some quick fire questions. Yeah, yeah. Where we're just going to find out a little bit more about you. Yeah. So we'll start with who did you who did you support when you were a kid? Chelsea, I did. Yeah. Yeah. And I sort of Chelsea, but then I, <laughs> no. as I got a bit older, I changed <laughs> to Arsenal. You can't do that. What <laughs> no, you no. Can, can we cut? The, can we edit that to just make make, make the correct answer stand? <laughs> well, why, why Chelsea? Uh, I don't know. I think um, yeah, just growing up, I love Lampard. I loved him when I was a, a young kid. Um, so I think that was one of the main reasons why I'd done that. Yeah, man nice. after my own heart. <laughs> <laughs> um, who's your favourite? Oh, you just—I suppose you've answered it. Uh, Lampard growing up was your favourite. But um, what about favourite footballer now? Favourite footballer now. Yeah. Um, let's exclude Villa as well. <laughs> Actually, no. Go on. We'll include them in as well. If you want. Favourite footballer now. I think mm. I'm going to go with De Bruyne. You know, Kevin De Bruyne. Baller. Yeah. yeah watching him, I'm real. And I like Mbappe as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Fancy, player. On the fancy playing against him. <laughs> yeah, I know. I never <laughs> want to do that. <laughs> um, if we were to look through your phone book now, who is the most famous footballer in the uh, context? Ex footballer, footballer. Uh, anyone? Uh, it's either Gerard or Lewandowski, no? Oh, look at that. <laughs> He's yeah, showing that's, off that's, now, that's isn't he? That's top tier, isn't it? <laughs> that is elite. Gerard really? Lewandowski, yeah, you know. Wow. Who cares? Gerard or Lewandowski, yeah, one that, of them. That's class. Um, and who's the most famous non-footballer in your phone book? Fav famous non-footballer? Yeah. Oh, I feel like he's got an answer here, but he's yeah, debating no, to whether think. to share it. Yeah, it's something like yeah. Kim Kardashian or something, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> nah, nah. I shouldn't say a few of these. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, honestly, I wouldn't know. No? Nah, I'll have to have a look or a think. Mm. Um, we'll come back okay. to it. We'll, we'll come, come back, back to it. Come back, yeah. I feel like he's got a few famous I've got a few famous people in my phone. Yeah. I've got a few yeah, famous people in my trouble, phone, but, but like, I'll have a look. Yeah. Okay. Right, I'll okay, have a look and come back. What, what about away from football? What do you like doing? How do you spend your time? <laughs> to be fair, yeah, away from football, I'm, I try and keep it in the sports industry. I love snooker. Yeah, I've got a table at home, so I'm always playing. It sort of takes your mind off football as well, obviously. Not having a kids or a missus, I've got to put my time somewhere else. <laughs> um, so I play snooker a lot. I play golf, get out on the course a lot. My friends love, love golf and snooker, so it's perfect. Yeah, they're always up for it. Love it. Um, would you ever be a coach or a pundit? Yeah, yeah, I think I'd be a coach. I don't know if I'd be a pundit. I don't think I couldn't sit there and slag players off. Yeah. I don't like it when I see that. Um, do, you, do you get? Do you, does, it, yeah. <laughs> yeah. does it hurt when you hear <laughs> nah, stuff? It's like it's it's it's, it's life, isn't it? Yeah. Like every pundit has their own opinion. So um, I'd want to be a coach. I think. Yeah, I, I think I'd like to be a coach. I would like to be a manager, to be honest. Yeah. yeah what I kind think. of manager do you reckon you'll be? What's your style? I'd be a ball playing. I'd have oh, yeah. his full backs flying on, <laughs> both of them. Danny Elvis. <laughs> Don't worry <laughs> about coming back. Um, <laughs> play two up top, Defa. Nice. Get the ball in the box. Yeah. I'd oh, like to start non-league level and then just sort of try and work my way up. I think that'd be quite it's cool. Strategy. My brother's a good coach as well. Yeah, yeah my brother owns a co coaching business. So nice. my brother's a really good coach and my best friend works for him as well. So I'd have them two with me. Yeah. There you go. That's Love for once. That. Any non-league managers, uh, <laughs> owners. I've, what's the proudest moment of your career so far? 
Um, I'd say playing in a World Cup, yeah, massive. I think obviously making my debut, Premier League debut, is obviously massive. But I think playing in a major tournament for me was proud, yeah, proud moment. Amazing. And uh, the toughest moment of your career so far? Toughest moment. Um, Is it against Mbappe, maybe? <laughs> nah, toughest moment in terms of what, like playing against it, it, players or like. It can be anything. There's been a few moments where I'm sort of like, I remember giving a penalty away against Tottenham and scoring and stuff like that. But like, I'm sort of like a positive character. I sort of don't get too low and don't get too high. I just sort of, if things go wrong, then I know how quickly football changes. Mm. So try and not, obviously, you get down and stuff, but just try and get, your, get good people around you, give you good support and move on from it. Um, well, on that, who's yeah. the most influential person in your career? Uh, my dad, I'd say, yeah. My dad's my dad played the game. He knows the game inside out. Um, so to have someone like that close that I can trust and speak to about anything, I think he's been a major part. I think my fam my whole family, I can speak to them about anything. Like so close with mum and dad. My brother plays footy, coaches footy, so I can speak. Obviously, not life's about footy yet. Like yeah. obviously you got to have a balance between having a family life and football. But in terms of football, I've got like my dad who can inf give me good, good, good information and good uh, advice in football. So I'd say them, yeah. Well, talking of advice, what's the best piece of advice you've ever been given? I think work hard, enjoy what you do and everything you do, give your all. Especially in my game, I think, I think um, hard work beats talent for sure. And when you got both, you see players go to the top. So mm. I think always work hard at what you do is, is one of the main, main, bits of information I'd, I'd give to a young Matty Cash growing up or a young college student that wants to be a pro. Work hard at what you do, enjoy it. And every time you're on the pitch, every time you're in the gym, live your life properly and do it right. Amazing. Mm. You obviously played at the 2022 World Cup. Mm. A call up came along that I didn't necessarily foresee. How, how did that come about? Yeah, to be fair, it's been in the fam. Obviously, my nan and granddad born in Poland, my mum's Polish. Um, it's sort of been in, in the family for ages. We've sort of had the conversation for, for years about, imagine, like, what, what if? Um, and there was the president of Poland didn't want me there, the first president that was there, the last president that was there. He didn't want me because I didn't speak Polish or whatever. The, that's, that's up to him, that's fair enough. Um, and a new president come in and I think they had a conversation with the manager. Paolo Sousa was the manager at the time and I just had a phone call one day, yeah, just like, um, I think I missed the call I was training and he left me a message to say Matty it's um, Paolo Sousa the Poland manager can you call me when you get a minute and I was like yeah yeah so I called him and he just said listen we really want you here and um, we're going to do everything we can to, to get you a passport as quick as we can um, and then yeah the president got me a passport within <laughs> within like two weeks normally it takes about six months <laughs> uh, friends in high places yeah. Yeah, yeah. and we had the um, playoff games for the World Cup coming up I think it was in I think there was a there was a World Cup um, uh, international break on one month and then I think four months later it was the World Cup maybe a bit longer no no longer than that but I only had one I think break before the World Cup um, World Cup qualifier sorry confusing myself here <laughs> And yeah, it just sort of like got done really quickly. He said, we want you in before the qualifiers happen. So yeah, it got done and, and I went in and they've made me feel great. And was, is it true that your mum taught you a few phrases and a few words before going to camp? Yeah, yeah. I think, <laughs> yeah, when, when I got the passport, yeah, we went over some bits, but it's such a difficult language. Yeah, so yeah. hard to learn. I sort of had a, I had a Polish teacher for six months. I don't think I learned anything. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I was school with French. Yeah. I did French for years. I can't say why. I'd literally like have a lesson and then after the lesson, I'm thinking, where do I start? Like, I can't even remember. I can say hello. I can say yeah. little things. I can say like, like yeah, just like day to day life stuff. Yeah, because I, I, I don't know about you, but like usually, um, I remember when I was younger, because I speak Persian as well, yeah. and I used to get taught like, swear words first, straight away. Like that's the first <laughs> thing you learn. Like you learn. Really? I don't, was that the same for you? Nah, nah. Polish, no? uh, to be fair, I knew them anyway. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but every time I give the ball away, the centre half is saying the word. <laughs> so, uh, on, on the pitch, you obviously all communicate in Polish. So did you have yeah. to learn those phrases? Yeah, Man but, on. Like, like, yeah, pass the. Yeah, ball but when you're on the pitch, you don't sort of. Like you speak, but you don't like, I think we don't really communicate in Polish on the pitch. I don't think you just sort of play. You yeah. don't really like speak. They'll say like left, right, if I'm checking my shoulders or part, like you don't, when you pass the ball, you don't shout pass. Yeah. Yeah, Maybe yeah, say yeah. man on, but you sort of, I say that in English to them and they all speak English anyway, so. Yeah. How were they quite welcoming towards, like yeah. obviously from their perspective, 
a fairly English bloke coming into the camp. Were they welcoming? Yeah, yeah, really welcoming them, yeah. To be fair, the whole country's been amazing with me, yeah. Since I've been there, like, they always they always make me feel welcome. Um, the players are great with me. The staff were great. Obviously, we've got a new manager now. Um, so I'm looking forward to going in to work with them. But, yeah, honestly, it's been, it's been really good, yeah. And what was the first training session like? Was it tough? Was it different? I was in a box with Lewandowski, yeah, first session, yeah. <laughs> but that was, was like, surreal, wasn't it? Away, yeah. yeah, it was probably my best session I've had all year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, uh, no, nah, it, was, it was good, yeah. I think we went, um, we were in Spain for a training camp when I first met up with him. And yeah, it was, it was really good, yeah. How good is Lewandowski close up? Yeah, he's class, yeah. He's just like, he's an absolute animal, to be honest. Yeah, he's, he's unbelievable. His finishing is... And he's always in the he's always in the right space at the right time. Like if, if he's always in the middle of the box, in the middle of the goal, he's in the box somewhere, and you just know he's going to score. Yeah. Would you say that he's the best forward you've ever played with? Uh, well, I'm not going to leave Ollie Watkins out. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, Different styles. Yeah, 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 no. Both excellent. Different yeah, players. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> nah, yeah. Um, yeah, I think his his CV is is. He's, he's a world-class player, isn't he? He's like one of the best he's ever been in that position. So I think, yeah, he is probably the best striker I've played with because because of his CV. Um, not disrespecting the strikers that I play with. Ollie Watkins, played with. <laughs> yeah, no, nah, he's, 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 he's up there. He's obviously, yeah, he's world-class. So. And what's he like off the pitch? Because obviously, to me, he strikes me as like quite a quiet person to mm. get some of his job. Are you talking about like, you know, that like model professional? Is that, is that? Yeah, yeah, he's just like, he's, he's exactly that. Mm. He... he, he um, He's always first on the pitch, last to leave. He's, he lives his life right, and he's, he's 34, mm -hmm. and he's and he's playing the way he is. So it proves how much he looks after his body. And yeah, he's he's a, a role model in Poland and to have around the team. Yeah. Can, can I ask you a question about Lewandowski? There's one aspect to him that I'm not particularly fond of. How do you feel about his TikToks? Yeah, yeah, his TikToks, yeah. I've seen him, yeah. When you're him, you can do what you want. So. It's a really, really fair point, actually. And to be yeah. fair, you let him off because it was lockdown as well. Yeah, A lot right. of his TikToks were in you, lockdown. Were you, were you doing it as well, yeah? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I was, to be honest, yeah. Well, yeah. We don't get them up, but... <laughs> I think we cue, might. Cue I think, the clip. I, yeah, I think we might. I think that's exactly what we'll do. Yeah, cue, cue the clip. Oh, uh, that's close. Yeah, um, nah, he's lockdown. Uh, lockdown banter he was. Yeah. Uh, do you like a bit of TikTok? You, you I, I'm always on. I don't actually have an account or anything. Right. I don't make TikToks, but when I'm at home, bored, I just scroll on it for an hour. Yeah. <laughs> did did you home. know any of the other players in the Polish camp before joining it? Yeah, uh, Klitsch, Mateusz Klitsch messaged me. Okay. Um, I played against him for years against Leeds Forest. It was obviously a big mm. battle. and We had loads of games, to be honest, against them. Um, and he messaged me when it come out on the, in the press, he just said, is it true? As I said, yeah, yeah. So obviously he was welcoming. welcoming. Um, Bednarak, obviously, I knew I played against. Never like, I didn't know any of them on a personal level. Just knew that because I played against them before. Um, so yeah, just them two, really. And Jakub Moda as well, because I'm a Brighton fan. Yeah, so yeah, I had to ask, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's, he's obviously brilliant. Yeah, I like mm. Moda. He's a fantastic player. Obviously he got injured. Um, but yeah, I, I played. I think I played against him once before. Yeah. yeah. And have you become particularly close to anybody in the camp? Like, who do you room with and, and all that? Um, yeah. To be fair, they're all really like we're all quite close. To be honest, we're all um, we're all like mates. Yeah. Um, obviously, Beddy, I played with at Villa, so we we've, we've obviously built a relationship here. Um, yeah, and sort of yeah, Beddy, I'd say yeah, and Klitschy, yeah, we're we're all good friends. Yeah. yeah. Um, just going on to the Nations League, of course, you scored um, in that 2 2 draw. Mm. What was that feeling like, just scoring for, for Poland? Yeah, it was a bit of a relief, actually, because um, I sort of wanted to, as, as, a, as an attacking fullback, um, people talk about stats a lot. And um, I sort of wanted to get my first goal out of the way there, you know. Obviously, it's a nice feeling when you get, get your first goal for, obviously, club and country. Mm. Um, and against, obviously, Holland as well was a, a big game as well. It was obviously a away at Holland. Yeah, and it was just a good feeling. Yeah, it was probably one of the best feelings I've had, sort of relief just to score, yeah. And you've been trying to learn the language mm. and I think you're doing okay. You were quite self-deprecating, <laughs> which is a nice yeah. quality, but I, I think you're quite good. Mm. And I also didn't realise... Don't ask me. But do, you know, do you know what I would <laughs> suggest? Do a test, yeah. I think there could be a BAFTA coming to you. Oh, what? A BAFTA. Yeah. I think you're an excellent actor and linguist. Okay, yeah. Check out this clip. Let 
Kasz wpada na święta. Dokładnie, kasz wpada na święta. Ubezpiecz auto na Mubi i odbierz 150 zł zwrotu na konto. Fajnie, jak kasz wpada na święta. Tylko na Mubi.pl slash kasz. Were you, did they prep you for that? Well, how did that all come about? Yeah, no, I, um, I went over there on, I think, I can't remember what day it was. I went over and had to do two sort of filmings and it was, it was really good actually. I enjoyed it, yeah. It was just um, in, a, in a house, obviously coming down a chimney, <laughs> pretending to be Santa. As you do. <laughs> um, yeah, and then the other one was the, the dog one, I think it was. No, it was good. Yeah, yeah, it was actually nice to do something different. Yeah, a bit of acting. It's better than my football skills. <laughs> Can you see yourself becoming an actor in the future? No, no. No. It took me far. about, it took me a day and a half to learn the, the lyrics. That, uh, to learn it was just the, one word, wasn't it? No, there was a few. No, was it? It was a big advert. You got the old advert. <laughs> <laughs> he's slow. scrambling. He's like, no, I'm not having this. <laughs> <It's close. laughs> if, if Poland played England, who do you think your dad supports? Poland, yeah. Do you know that? Do you, do you, do you yeah, know I that? I ain't going to support England if I'm playing. <laughs> no chance. Yeah. Nah, Poland. Yeah. Definitely, yeah. And obviously your mum's. Yeah, mum, Polish, yeah. yeah. yeah mum it. loves it, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, when you were lining up uh, at the time in the World Cup, um, were you able to take it all in? What was like, do you have to pinch yourself? Is it, oh, I'm, in, I'm, in the World, I'm at the World Cup? Mm. Yeah, people, like, I've had a lot, of, a lot of questions like that. Um, and sort of when you're there, you, like it's hard to take in because you're like so focused on your job and obviously you get when you uh, the day after you play and obviously the week you sort of get a bit of time to yourself to relax but you're sort of in the moment you know what I mean it's sort of hard to take it in especially on game day like playing in a World Cup everyone's watching you just want to do well so the adrenaline and all that and all the obviously you get obviously get a little bit nervous as well um, you just try and do do your best on the pitch rather than taking everything in I wish you could take it all in, but yeah. it was hard to. And when you get back and you sort of speak about it, you obviously take it in and you've obviously played in a major tournament. So that's when you take it in, yeah. Mm. I was at the Argentina-Poland game. Oh, you there? Yeah. yeah, I was at that game. Yeah, yeah. I thought it was brilliant. Tough day, that. <laughs> <laughs> Tough day, but ultimately ended in triumph. Yeah, yeah. F- for you. It yeah, was the, like, main, the main aim was to, to qualify. qualify. Yeah, absolutely. yeah, definitely. And did, we've done that, so. Did you think... Were you aware? Because I was in the stands and I think that in all of the football matches I've ever been to across the world Argentina's support oh, I've never known anything like yeah, it yeah incredible were you aware of that on the pitch yeah yeah I think before before the game kicked off like the stadium was pretty much full full of yeah. like Argentine fans um, yeah they were I think they were probably the best fans in the tournament I'd say yeah definitely they were obviously when we played against them they've got the, the players they have and it made it even harder to play with the fans yeah. so yeah no wonder they went on yeah. to win it yeah <laughs> um, and of course we've all seen on social media you got the shirt of Mbappe got uh, one of Messi as well mm. firstly why are they here why are they not here <laughs> they're, they're getting framed they're getting framed are they yeah, getting framed, okay so. where, where are they going to be in, in, your, in your house I'm not going to say that just in case yeah, someone just, uh, fair enough yeah, yeah, yeah. security <laughs> yeah. reasons fair yeah. enough yeah. nah nah they'll be in the game from somewhere yeah. <laughs> nice. yeah, nah, yeah looking forward to getting them framed and up yeah yeah how does it go getting a player like that to talk? Like, how do you, at the end of the game, do you just go and have a conversation with Messi and ask for the shirt? Or is it a race? Because presumably you weren't the yeah. only person on the pitch that wanted the Lionel Messi shirt. Now, nah, well, when the Messi, uh, when the Argentine and Poland fixtures come out, um, I said to Martinez straight away, get me that shirt. Oh, so uh, you had the plug. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I liked to be fair, yeah. I, didn't have a ta- I didn't have a chance to speak to him when we were at the World Cup, obviously, because he had games. And then after the game, he come up to me and said, I've got you a present. So I was like, all right. And I was suddenly thinking, what is it? He just said, come in the changing room and follow me. So I followed him and he had a bag and it had Messi's shirt in it. Yeah. That's it. Oh, that's yeah. So, so that was good. And then um, the Mbappe one, I just said to him towards the end of the game, like the 90th minute, the ball went out and I just said, can I get your shirt after? He said, yeah, bro, no worries. Yeah. So then after they, he went off and celebrated or whatever, and I thought, oh, I'm just going to leave it. And then he come up to me in the tunnel and took it off. Yeah. Oh, man. So yeah. he remembered it. And yeah, 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 yeah. He remembered. To be you fair. got in early then. So you got in before the full time whistle. That's yeah, smart. but we like we were like walking. I was just walking off. I weren't gonna bother yeah. asking again. Mm. I just thought that's yeah. it. And then he cu- he like semi jogged over to me and just took it off. And I was like, sound, yeah, <laughs> gentleman. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Do you have a big Legend. collection at home or? Yeah, I got a collection. Yeah, I've got yeah. a few good ones. Yeah, I got um, Memphis Depay when we played Holland. Uh, Lewandowski got me a Bayern Munich one. Uh, JT got me a signed Chelsea one with a captain armband. Mm-hmm. And then them two to add on, yeah. Class. So I might have to take a Get few that down. In the snooker to put them yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolute definitely. collection, that. 
So are you saying that Kylian Mbappe's got a signed Matty Cash shirt hanging up in his game? Nah, he probably used it to clean the car or something. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do, you, do you give him your shirt though, yeah? Yeah, I'll give yeah, him yeah, mine. Yeah, it's yeah. polite, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Can't not. Yeah, can't, can't not, not yeah. 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 Also, he'd have nothing to wear. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and then going on to um, playing Kylian Mbappe, like, what's the game plan when you face it against the, the calibre of uh, Kylian Yeah, we, we watch videos, obviously, a, a few days leading up to the France game. Watch videos of him and he was lightning I think the game where he came on against he didn't start a game and because they qualified already I think and he come on and he ripped it up and we watched the end of that and it was like wow <laughs> and then in the, the day of the game I just sat in my room and watched clips of him um, the sort of how am I going to stop him really and we had a good battle I think we had a really good like, it was a mm. good challenge for me I think we had like 1v1 I think there was a f few times he sort of got around me and then a few where I won it off him we had a few one on one races as well um, he's not. Like that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's not. <laughs> <I'm joking. laughs> he's is, is that what it is with him? He is is, is it the pace? Like you know, yeah. he's, obviously he's obviously he's a fantastic footballer with a yeah, brilliant yeah. eye for goal and so many attributes. Yeah. But if it's one thing from your perspective, pace. is it the pace? Yeah. yeah. Is his pace is never like I said before? Sterling's rapid. When I played against Sterling, he he can run, but he is Mbappe is another level. Yeah. Really? Yeah. He and just shoots off the go, and you can't actually do anything. Yeah. yeah mm. Nothing. And what did the gaffer say to you? What was his like plan to plan um, attack? I think he, he wanted me to back off him and I didn't okay. want to do that. Give him the space. Yeah, yeah. He, he wanted me to back off him. Um, but I thought if I get tight, then there's less chance of him sort of running at me. Mm -hmm. So the first like couple, I got tight and it was fine. And then there was a few where he gains, gains a yard and you can, can't do anything about it. Um, but I, I wanted to go tight, yeah. I sort of, yeah, that was it. Mbappe or Messi, who was a harder challenge? Well, Messi was the other side of the pitch, so I'd say Mbappe, yeah. I think Messi's quality is, is, speaks for itself. His way to pass, the way he controls the ball is obviously, I, I don't need to sit here and explain Messi. <laughs> but I think for me, Mbappe was the hardest test, yeah. Would you say that Lionel Messi is the GOAT? Yeah, I think so, yeah. I think it's difficult, isn't it? Because like them two, him and Ronaldo, have done it at the top for years and years, 15, 20, well, however many years they've done it. So it's hard to sort of single out one. I think they're both... Um, they're both goats, yeah. both of them. And who's the toughest player you faced at the World Cup? Just generally, was it one of those two, Mbappe or Mbappe? Messi? Yeah, yeah, Is that Mbappe. The yeah, toughest yeah. by far. Yeah. yeah, yeah, definitely. I'd say he's he's the toughest. Yeah. And international football, tournament football like that, compared to your everyday challenges at Aston Villa, is there a huge difference playing in playing style? Do you find it very different playing international tournament football compared to Premier League? Football? Yeah, it's different, obviously, because you got different managers, different players, so different styles, like courses different styles um, and I think international football is a little bit more I wouldn't say slower but it's a little bit more um, not tactical it's hard to say it's just a little, it's, it's obviously top because every every player that's playing is the best in the country that's why they're playing for the country so they're all top players it's, it's different yeah it's different Premier League's like really fast and like energetic and do you know what I mean quick players everywhere and like you know what I mean so I'm not saying there's not that in international, it's just a little bit different. Mm. And you talked about Emi Martinez earlier. Um, what's he been like coming back from obviously winning the World Cup? Is he, is he different now? Has he got, you know, a little bit? No, nah, no, nah, he's been is brilliant. He been, yeah, yeah, he's been class, yeah. Um, Emi's a character, like... He's, he's <laughs> we saw a, in the celebrations. Yeah, I think, yeah. he's such a character. He's yeah. like that in training. Is he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. he's the same, yeah. yeah. Like if you miss and you're on, if you're on his side, you're buzzing, but if you're on the other <laughs> side and you lose and he saves, he's laughing at you. And, He'll give you really? some of Yeah, like only like joking. Yeah, that, of course. Like he's, He's amazing, yeah. He's such a good goalie. But it, since he's been back, he's been brilliant. Yeah, because I know he's all about mind games, isn't he? Yeah, so yeah. He, if he's doing that in training, yeah, he does it in training. Imagine. Does yeah, it in imagine. training, and yeah. he doesn't even like when people say it's taking it. He's not doing it to be personal. Mm. Like he mm. does it in training to us boys. So I think it's just his way of trying, trying to win. Yeah. I think, yeah, and it's like, amazing what he achieved there. It's really like the mm. way that he, the way that he contributed to that, to yeah. that victory. He he changed the way that I spoke about penalties without me even realizing it. Yeah. You know, usually when a player steps up to take a penalty. I'll always go, do you think he'll score? Yeah, yeah. When With Emi him. Martin is in goal, I'll go, do you think yeah. he'll save it? Yeah. yeah. Like, I kind of look <laughs> nah, at it completely yeah. differently. Yeah, and like, I see it every day, like when we do penalties quite a lot, mm. and he, he obviously don't save everyone, but he's like, he's a big goalie, isn't he? Mm. 
and in the World Cup, he's he's obviously proved it. Yeah, and has he bought his medal in? Has he let you have? A yeah, look? he bought his medal in. Yeah, yeah. It was his first day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> of course he did. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Come back and just obviously we congratulated him and he yeah. showed us it and that. Yeah, fair play. Because I, I don't know, I don't know if you saw it, but McAllister obviously got that big yeah, I seen it. Yeah, celebration yeah. was it the same it was for him? Amazing. Was it? No, he had a yeah, he had a good welcome. Yeah, yeah. 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 It wasn't like what I seen at Brighton. That yeah. was brilliant, to be fair. Um, but now nah, all the lads and that wished him like said well done and yeah. obviously the coaching staff as well and yeah we've obviously I think we had a game a few days later when he come back so we were just focused on that but yeah, yeah he's been definitely great. one of the best goalkeepers in the world at the moment yeah yeah for sure I'd say he is probably yeah I think he is and he? he's just won the World Cup basically not won a it but he's obviously done major major impact on them winning the World Cup I think he's he's up there with the best in the world yeah love it. What we're going to do now, Matty, is we're going to play a game. It's called Cash In or Cash Out. Yeah. We're going to give you a series of various scenarios. Yeah. And what you take What would I do? There. Cash In or yeah. Cash Out? Yeah. All Just right. tell us whether you do it or not, all right? Okay, so this is the scene, all right? It's the World Cup final. It's two all and it's the 89th minute, all right? You're running through one on one. Yeah. Okay, you see Lewandowski. He's on, he's on a hat trick, by the way, all right? He's just scored two. Yeah. Do you go for goal or do you pass it? I go for goal. <laughs> you go for goal? <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> Well, he's got a tap in, hasn't he? Well, yeah, pretty so much. So if I slide it there, he's a yeah, goal. And, and he's got, he scored a hat trick. And I've got a 50 50 chance. And like. you're winning the game as well. Yeah, I'm sliding it. <laughs> yeah? Really? Yeah. See, I, I, for I, one, if I miss. Yeah, he's going to go it's mad. It's too old. <laughs> yeah. He's going to go mad. The whole, the whole world's going to go mad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sliding it. Yeah, so you're, you're, you're cash out. Yeah, cash yeah. out. Fair. <laughs> yeah. Right, scenario two for you here. Aston Villa captain John McGinn proposes a golf tournament amongst the squad. The winner... I'm winning that. Really? You <laughs> yeah. think so? Yeah. Okay, so family. the winner is free from all player fines for a year, but anyone outside the top five has to pay double fines for the rest of the year. Yeah. Are you cashing in or cashing out of that tournament? I'm I'm cashing in because I know I'm going to win it. So you you are definitely, undoubtedly, winning the that top tournament. five golf I'm, players. I'm top. So <laughs> you actually <laughs> change the rules? I'll play off free, you know that. So you, I'm still a, free? Yeah, I'm a free... I'm um, playoff free at but, golf. It's not quite a scratch though, is it? Players, yeah. yeah, good, but like, I have to give him lessons to be good. No, I'm joking. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, who's up there? I, I think up, everyone there? in the Villa squad yeah, who's up there? would say I'm the best golfer at the club. Who's your challenger? Not being big headed, but I am. <laughs> <laughs> who's your challenger? Who's, who's There's a few challengers. There's a few that have tried to get better. Ollie Watkins, when I first played with him, God, it took about eight hours. <laughs> have, you got, have you got a group WhatsApp? Yeah, yeah. Why don't you? I, called a AVFC Golfers. Yeah. If you were to put a message in that WhatsApp group now saying, lads, am I the best? What would come back? What are you on about, Kashi? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Lads, am I the best? Am I the best? Mm. They'll be like, what are you on about? <laughs> now, like, I'm the, I'm the best. So if I were to ask any, like, say, parallel universe. Yeah. As I'm on a train back to London, Tyrone Mings is there. If I were to just tap who's on the Who's the best shoulder, golfer, Kashi? Go, I'm really sorry yeah. to trouble you, Tyrone. Just very quick question. Who's the best golfer at Villa? Me, yeah. You guarantee it? Yeah. All right. I'm going to put this to the test. Not at even some point 99%, in my life, 100%. At some point in my life, I will come across an Aston Villa yeah. player. Yeah. Who's I thought golf. you knew this. I, I'm well. I'm known for being good. What at did golf. you just nearly say? World class? Eh? <laughs> did you? No, not world class. <laughs> not world class. But I'm known for being good at golf. Wait, okay. In the footballing, like yeah, yeah, yeah. Community, yeah? yeah, yeah. You're known as one of the best. Yeah, yeah. All right. Any football player watching this Matt right now? Said it, we want to on an interview. Did he? Yeah. Where did he see you play? Oh, on a golf day. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm. How'd that go? Yeah, it was good, yeah. yeah. yeah it was good. <laughs> Who's the best other footballer you've played with? Where you've gone out on a golf course, you've got to go, God, he's good. Um, best other good golfer, footballer? Probably himself, probably. I think War <laughs> I've never played with War Prowse, but I'm hearing he's he's good at golf. He's a setter, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. if he's any good as his free like, kicks. Obviously, we've got at, at Villa, we had Danny Ings was, was mm. decent. Ashley Young plays, Mings plays, uh, Ollie Watkins. We've got a group chat that we all go out and play. But I don't think they like playing with me because it's like... You're too good. Yeah. Is, is there somebody... They all like, they've obviously started recently. They all, they're all decent. They can all hit it and they can like play and um, I don't get the invite sometimes. <laughs> who's, who's the worst? Is there like clearly somebody struggling? No, they can all play, all you know. Right. There's not like one that's crap. Right. The one nah. you're like, he's not coming today. Nah, no. Nah. Not, not no, nah, they're, all, they're all decent, but yeah. I think, yeah. I'm probably the best golfer. Yeah. Right. We're going to put you to the test, I'm sure. All right, final scenario, okay? Uh, it's the Christmas party. You end up in a karaoke bar, all right? And, cash uh, in, by the way. Cash in. <laughs> oh, yeah, cash in, yeah, cash yeah. In. Just to clarify. <laughs> but I'll start that again. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking, I'm joking. Right, so you're out for a Christmas party. 
You're in a karaoke bar, right? Tara Ming says you have to do a duet. Nelly and Kelly, Dilemma. Right, great tune, by the way. Are you cash in or cash out? Depends how many I've had. <laughs> <laughs> do you find yourself on the karaoke uh, or not? Yeah, I'll give it a go. Yeah? Cash in. Cash in, in yeah. yeah. What's, your, what's your go-to karaoke song? Um, Robbie Williams. Oh, which one? What's Angels. One? Yeah. How does that go? <laughs> I said away. Let's get a slow go, go, go. Go. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I thought like I was in the room with me. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, God. Oh, class. Right. Uh, stage in here. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> got, You've got a mic already, so you're, you're halfway there. <laughs> right. um, let's, let's put it all the way back, uh, back to when you started out in Nottingham Forest. Um, you spent some time at Wickham, uh, but came through at Forest, uh, a winger at the time. Uh, were you always a winger growing up? Or? Is this a cash in or cash out? No, 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 sorry. <laughs> this is a new format. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, nah, it was like my time at Forest was amazing. I had the best years. Um, Obviously, grew up there, come through the, not grew up, I'm from London, but I come through the academy there and played, obviously, my first professional sort of footballer. Um, so, yeah, I've got nothing positive. I've got nothing not positive to say about Forest. It was amazing. Um, and, and obviously, when the, the chance come to move to Villa, it was obviously a, going from the champ to the prem, so it was obviously a big move. And everyone sort of understood it. Like everyone, the fans, the club, they knew that I sort of wanted to go and try and prove myself in the prem. So... Um, for all parties it, w- it was fine and ever since I've gone I still have Forest fans messaging me now pretty much every day just like wishing me well and mm. and um, yeah it was it was good as well when I went back it was nice to see everyone and, and say hello so yeah now nah, amazing time there yeah Were you clearly the best player in your school? Uh, nah I, d- I don't know really I don't think I don't know You must I, have I, I, like, really? I, lo- I love playing I just wanted to play football and I remember like I weren't the brightest at school like I didn't really want to do school. Kids don't listen to that. <laughs> um, I just sort of wanted to play football and like everything I'd done was just to try and be a footballer. So I obviously got the chance to go to college, like a football college at Fab Academy. Um, and I didn't get any grades at school. So like I missed the education part there. Cause normally when you go to college, you have to do like education as well as mm. what you're doing, I think. Um, and I just trained every day yeah, and it ended up getting, getting into forest. So. Yeah. I'm pretty sure in America that you can't, unless you pass your tests. Yeah, yeah. You can't, do you, would you like to see something like that introduced here or do you think it's a bit too much? What way? Where that, as in like you have to pass your test to be able to play? Yeah, well, I think, um, no, nah, I think because there's, there's players out there that haven't got the opportunity to be in an academy mm. that ain't bright, like that maybe not be as good academically as what other people are. So mm. I think if you're naturally good at football, um, not saying I'm naturally good at football. I mean, in terms of if, if you can't get the grades or whatever, I think it's, it's being at the right place at the right time. And lucky I sort of fell into that category, yeah. Your dad was a pro as well, wasn't he? Mm. Was that a help or did that add pressure to you? No, nah, it never added pressure to me. I think he sort of strived me on, really. Because um, obviously when I was at Wickham, we'd play in, I was obviously under 15s, 14s, and he used to drive all over the country for me. So the pressure was to not play well and then get back and have to do running around the green that I used to live around. <laughs> he was quite harsh on me with that. Um, but no, nah, he never added pressure to me. Like really, it sort of made me want to be better, if anything. Mm. And then talking, obviously going from a winger to right back, I think it was Sabri Lamucci at mm. uh, Forest and put you uh, as a right back. Yeah. Was that the kind of moment you thought, yeah, I think this is for me now. I want to be a right back rather than be a winger. Yeah, I remember like when Sabri came in, I've got a really good relationship with Sabri even now. He still calls me now. We speak quite a lot. Um, and I remember he come in and Jimmy Gilligan, Sabri just got the job and we had a, tw- we had a, a friendly game, it was pre-season against Alfreton and Jimmy Gilligan was the 23s manager so he took that game because obviously Sabri just got appointed and he just said, um, Kashi, you're going to play right back and I played on the wing and in midfield previously so I was like, obviously new managers here, why am I playing there? Like, and I think them two must have had a conversation about me moving there and I was like, alright, so anyway I played, had a good game um, and then the manager obviously come in the next day had a meeting with him and he just pulled me and said listen I want you to play right back and then from then on I just started the first game and played every game there yeah. were you happy to do that? yeah yeah I loved it like as soon as I started playing it I think the first game of the season was against West Brom at home I scored and like everyone was like bloody hell like who's this a right back <laughs> been the worst winger in the league before <laughs> <laughs> um and then, then I just started enjoying it. And then obviously I had a season and then I moved to Villa after that. Well, seeing, seeing as that obviously changed your, your career path, obviously Villa kept calling. Yeah, yeah. Um, how did that move come about, the Villa move? 
Um, so I was on holiday. I signed a new contract in January at, at Forest. I had four years. I signed a new four-year deal there. And then, um, obviously, I had a really good season. So I sort of had a few calls from a few clubs, my agent. And we went away to um, went away to Turkey and I was on holiday there. And uh, my phone, I think Fulham had spoke to my agent and stuff. And, and obviously, because I loved it at Forest, but the opportunity was, as I said, to go mm. to the next level. Um, and then I had a call from Villa on the last day of the holiday to said, listen, we really want you. And that was it. It got done quite quickly. I come back and then I went back, reported back to Forest. I'd like a bit of pre-season training and then it got done within a week. Yeah. You, mm. you know how you speak so glowingly about Forest in your mm. time there? Yeah. Does Aston Villa now have the same sort of feeling uh, within you? Like, yeah, do yeah. Do you feel at home there? Yeah, yeah, I feel at home, yeah. I love it there, yeah. I'll always, I'll always speak highly of Forest because... It was an amazing club. I, I came through the ranks there and it was obviously massive for me. And the fans were always amazing with me. So, And I'm getting that feeling with, at Villa. As soon as I arrived, they made me feel the fans have been brilliant with me. The club's fantastic. It's a massive club. I really enjoy being here. I love my love my football here. So hopefully it can continue. Yeah. And obviously linking up with Steven Gerrard, you're of an age where Steven Gerrard is an icon of the mm. Premier League. That must have been like really inspiring to play for him. Yeah, yeah. I've had like I've been lucky really. Obviously I had JT as a coach at Villa, obviously the year before. Um and then yeah, obviously working with the likes of Gerrard, I bought, built a really good relationship with him. Um and he was really good with me. So um yeah, I love I love playing under him and, and it was fantastic, yeah. Mm. Amazing. And have you noticed a big difference just n n in terms of perhaps approach, in terms of styles mm. between Emery and Gerrard? Yeah, I think every manager that comes in or, or goes into a job has got a different style. That's why you see managers come and go and change a lot. Um, and yeah, it's, it's a difference. Yeah, there's obviously different, as I said, different tactics, different ways of how we want to play. Um, and yeah, I'm loving life under, under Unai Emery, so... Hopefully that can continue for a long time. Mm. And it's recently come out, obviously, the Poland job's not now available, but he was linked with it. Mm. Would you would you have liked to have linked up with him again at, um, in the Poland squad? Yeah, I think, obviously, I, I seen it come out. I didn't know how true it was or yeah. whatever. Um, but yeah, obviously, we've got a new manager now, so hopefully um, we can we can do well under him. Yeah. Nice. You used to work in River Island. Mm. Other clothing <laughs> labels are available. Um <laughs> Did you ever think when you were working at River Island that you would go on to become a Premier League footballer? Like, did you always believe that you were going to make it to the very top of the game or was it more of a, a hope? Uh, more of a hope, yeah. Like, yeah, I think if you ask any 16, 17-year-old lad now, are you going to play in the Premier League? They wouldn't be able to answer. What like, branch of River Island were you in? In the lady section, yeah. I brought your customers in. <laughs> you asked you asked to be put there, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Can you yeah. put in the lady section, please. <laughs> uh, now, is that what you mean? What section was I in? Yeah, well, no, that was interesting. What? what I was what? in Windsor. Yeah. In Windsor. In Windsor. Yeah. So in the Windsor River Windsor, Island. River Island. Yeah. And lady then, section. And then Daniel's was next door. It was a toy like a. You have heard of Daniel's toy in shop. Windsor? It's like a toy shop. It's got everything. It's a bit like Harrods, but not as big as Harrods. Right. Does everything so like, mm. like um, clothes section, toy section, sport section, and all that. And I was in the toy shop there, yeah, stacking this, stacking oh, so the shelves. You're working two jobs. Yeah, yeah. I had that on a nice. Saturday, and then toy shop on a Sunday. Whilst training as yeah, well. Yeah, in Monday nice. to Friday training. Yeah, grafter. Yeah, oh, grafter. Look yeah. at that. Mama made mum made me um, a pocket money. Yeah, yeah. had that's, to earn it. That's class. Yeah. And what, was, what was your actual role? So I know you work in the women's section. But what were you doing? Fold, folding clothes? Yeah, just folding clothes, stock room. Yeah. yeah, putting labels on clothes, like getting deliveries in, stacking the shelves, doing mm. all what you'd see on a normal day. Do you know, like being today. completely honest with you, right? Like, you're wicked fullback. Mm. Were you wicked at stacking shelves? <laughs> were, were you good? Fold Top to tier. Save my life. No. <laughs> Like, yeah. say, say, so terrible, you, then. say there was, say there was a crisis <laughs> and they needed you today. Yeah. Could you step back in? Yeah, yeah, I'd step and deliver. In. Yeah, yeah. Would you Especially have? in the toy shop. I remember I used to do a day. I used to do a, on one sat one Sunday. Mm. I'd be upstairs and it was the dustiest, like sh like it was so dusty up in the mm. stock room. And I used to come home. I used to have dust all over my face. So I wouldn't like that now. <laughs> <laughs> but I reckon I could. I used to take my phone up and mm. go on my phone. What was? <laughs> <laughs> Was there any like moment or, or like, any kind of memory that sticks out whilst we're working? Like a funny story you could tell us or anything that just working happened? in the toy shop? Yeah, or, yeah, or or in River Island or either or. 
working in a toy shop. Yeah. This, this is a mad line of questioning. We have, we have <laughs> yeah. a Poland international just got back from a World Cup, a current people, Premier League player. <laughs> tell me about the this. This is what the people want to know. Do you know have worked in River Island and played? Yeah, Spain, exactly. No, exactly. That's what we want to know. <laughs> the fans are asking for it. Any funny stories? No, I don't yeah. think I got funny stories. I think when it hit five o'clock, when he used to shut, he used to just run out the door. <laughs> Um, I used to enjoy it to be honest like obviously I didn't know what the life of a like a professional footballer was like but I, I used to enjoy going to work on a Saturday I used to drive a polo I used to fill my car up and then love I'd that. have to work again to earn it back love it um, but now I, I enjoyed it yeah and obviously it's, I think everything I've done over the past has sort of got me to this moment so that was obviously part of it so. okay. just, just before um, we let you go do you think you could try and teach Maz one Polish expression? Yeah. Dzień cool. uh, dobry. Dzień dobry. Good day. Dzień dobry. Yeah, dzień yeah. dobry. Could you give him out of ten now? That was good, that. Say it again. Dzień dobry. Two. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a ten, that's a ten. <laughs> Love it. Matty Cash, thank you so much for coming oh, on thanks, this episode guys. of Sport Bowl Stories. We're so grateful to having you. Thank you very much, Matty. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> People go, oh, you're hard done by now. We didn't win enough games, right? Mm. Fact. The eight games that remaining were arguably the best run of games yeah. on paper. So that was the only bit I couldn't get. I was like, well, that's the best run. And you're taking us out two days before the best run. Well, well if you got a lap dance, you'd have to spin again. So it's mm -hmm. your fine to get the number of someone you do the lap dance. Oh, on. Wow. Genius.